Welcome on back everybody. Today we are dusting off our old buddy, the Crispy Collector. And today's video is sponsored by Mystery Tackle Box. If you're looking to grow your tackle arsenal, MTB is the best way to do it and you're gonna pay a lot less than you would in the stores. I've been partnered with MTB for years. They are a great partner and they also make the perfect gift for the fishermen in your circle. And after all these years, I'm still surprised by all the new tackle that I see in the boxes every month. They have tons of connections in the tackle world now. In every box, you're getting a great mix of hard baits, soft plastics, terminal tackle, and you're even getting Guggen Squad hard baits and plastics in there, so it is juicy. They have boxes for everybody, whether you're a beginning fisherman or you're looking for that next level elite box, and they have different species boxes as well, so they've got you covered. So for as little as 20 bucks a month, you get tons of new baits, brand name lures delivered straight to your door. So get started with your first mystery tackle box. The link is down in the description, guys. Use my code MONDO and you will save $10 off your first box. That is M-O-N-D-O. Thanks, MTB, for sponsoring today's video. Now on with the show. So the Crispy Collector has pretty much been dormant at the HQ since I got the silver bullet. I've been ripping around. I've been breaking that baby in. By the way, it is absent right now because I am getting a fish laying tool put on that thing and I cannot wait to, to fish it and show you guys. Some of y'all have asked for more bluegill videos out of, out of everything. And right now is the time to get after bluegill. They are on their beds. They are just post-spawn summer. Uh, this is weird to say, but moving out, I discovered a ton of them last time I was fishing in the silver bullet, so I know where they are. And you can always find all sorts of sunfish up in the shallows when it's warm. So it's, it's summertime, it's here in Texas, it's a great time to fish for them, and they are tasty. Not only do I like to eat them, but I also like to use them for catfish bait. There's only a few problems with the crispy. Uh, actually, we broke it out during some Guggen Squad videos uh, that you guys haven't seen yet, but um, me and Rob took it out. It was uh, it was it was kind of a mess. There, there's some issues with it. I definitely need to put a new battery in there, um, but we did a little bit of work to it. But there's still some th things that aren't functioning, and it has some holes in it. Water was getting in, but we digress. Quick chicken check, and then I'll get you guys updated on another project that I'm working on. Oh my chickens! So here's what's pretty interesting. Now the update with the chickens is this little this little buddy here. She'll actually let me touch her and pick her up. Uh, Mr. Penny and Colonel Sanders still they're they're guarding the roost. They are hands off. Um, but I've been I've been feeding them clover every day. We got a ton of clover growing in the yard, and they love it. And they let me uh, just you know like hand feed them basically, and they come right up to me. Um, so that's how I've gotten her to be really comfortable. I like for the hens to be very comfortable, you know, so I can uh, get their eggs. We don't have any issues. And if they have any, um, you know, medical problems, it's always nice to be able to pick them up, handle them, check them out, you know, check their crops and everything. So you just got to give them some little treats. And right now they are crazy about millworms and clover. Now I've also done the same thing with the chicks. So now when I come in here, they get really excited, usually, they get really excited, and they usually come right up to me. Right now is not one of those times. I guarantee you, though, if I put some clover in my hand, they'd come running over, and they'd be tearing it up. They're kind of doing their nappy thing right now. They've been feeding all morning. The frizzles, they're just like little lap dogs. It's crazy. Starting to get some peaches on the peach tree as well. Now let me take you over to the garage before we head up to the HQ and get the crispy. So another project that I'm working on right now is another bow because I have broken or cracked every bow that I have made so far. I think I'm on my fifth or sixth one. So this one, I got to give a shout out to a guy, a local boyer I met named Austin. A bowyer is someone who makes bows, by the way. Austin hooked me up with some staves, including the ultimate bow dark right here. Osage orange, um, beautiful one right there. 
I'm hoping I'm going to be able to make one like that's going to be my ultimate hunting bow for this season. And I'll definitely do a video on that, show you guys uh, the whole process. But this one right here is really good too. This one's made out of hickory. He gave me four staves, by the way, all different species of woods. So really cool experimenting. And I'm, I'd wanted to build a few more before I got to the ultimate uh, Osage so that, uh, you know, I'm just more experienced. This one's pretty good. It's just, it's just like just under 40 pounds. And I was hoping to get a little more out of it. I think I took too, too much off. So I'm going to put a little reflex in this bow uh, that I've built a little reflex jig and I'm going to rawhide back it. And then I'm going to take some snake skin. You guys remember the snake skin that I got from, uh, from a few weeks ago with the chickens? Uh, well, I've got another one that I'm picking up today. So I'm going to have multiple snake skins and I'm going to back some of these bows. So yeah, I'll, I'll do a video on that. I've never done it before. I think it's going to be really fun. Make the bow look awesome. It's great camouflage and it adds some protection. And we also got to get... Yeah. Oh, just a little propane, no big deal. We've also got to get this guy ready to go. So I have not set up this bow for bow fishing yet, but um, I, this thing has been sitting in my garage just begging uh, to go out there and do some bow fishing. So I've got a new bow fishing bow. I'm going to get in the crispy and get some. The Dugan Squad HQ, where your day old dreams come true. Here we are. We're at the crispy. We've got a fresh battery dual purpose. Hopefully this is going to light this baby up. And, oh gosh, I forgot. Oh no, I've got some at home. I've got some like flex seal that I need to put on the outside. Cause let me show you here with this uh, over, over time, the stress of the waves has just bucked the aluminum out of here. Got a couple holes in the mix, unfortunately. So uh, last time me and Rob took this boat out, it was uh, taking on a little water not, not enough to keep us off but you know what I'm saying it wasn't good um, these babies are just crusty and corroded I think this is the one that came with the boat 913 folks 913 how old were you at 913 two things I forgot here at the HQ my purpose of being here. Well, the crispy, uh, my terminal tackle box, which I left here the other day, got in my boat, realized, hey, I have no terminal. So we got that back online. That thing's heavy, hefty. And the other thing, which really only at the HQ can you find such a variety of different items. Wow, after a catch and cook, this kitchen actually looks really clean right now. Um, yeah, here it is. Dugan Squad HQ, where things are a little weird. It's not a shirt in there. Only at the HQ can you find Michelob Ultras and four and a half foot snake in the fridge. Don't you just love the great outdoors? There is always something. If you really want to truly be uh, just an all around outdoorsman, not just a uh, bass fisherman or like a trout fisherman or not just a deer hunter, if you really want to immerse yourself in everything, you will be busy year round. I promise you. There is something to do probably just in your state year-round some sort of species activity that's just going off in fun times so that's what I strive to do and my life is very busy because of it so I'm hoping 
Now when I hook this up, I'm gonna have the trim working. The trim was literally not working last time, which is pretty difficult when you're trying to rip. You're trying to rip down the lake, no trim, and just getting it, you know, off the trailer and all that. So hopefully this is going to fix that problem. Connect it up. Come on, baby. Is that neutral? Yep. That's neutral. Okay, she goes. Why is the trim not working? Well, guys, I just can't get the old girl to work with the, with the trim and the electric start. I feel like it's something very simple that I'm missing. It's like a button I'm not pushing or, you know, some sort of mode. I, I don't know. I could choke or something. I have no idea. So I'm just going to take it back to the treehouse and see if I can work on it. Got to get the snake. Stand out. Before it gets hot, no one wants a hot snake. Well, y'all, I think we might have a hub issue. I felt some rattling and uh, got a little bit of back and forth going on, so I don't know if this is going to make it home. We'll see. Good boy. I guess we might actually make it here. I'm kind of shocked. It is pretty wobbly. Something has definitely changed. Um, one of our Guggen Squad videos, me and Rob took this down a road that you really don't want to take a boat trailer. It could have something to do with it. But I need to uh, grease her up before we take her out on the water for sure. Probably should have put uh, a little bit of gap filler in there or something first, but I don't know. Might just cake it on here. Let's see, we got still got a hole in there. I put a charger on the battery. It it looks to be low. My thought was that the charge was so low on this battery, the, the other batteries that we were using, that it wasn't able to get the electric start going or the trim. If you know. If you've got one of these uh, Merck Tiller motors, let me know. I would love to know what it is. If it's something simple that I'm missing, but so far I can't figure it out. Let's take the old hub off, see what she's looking like. So for those of you that don't know, you have hubs on your trailer. They need to be greased. Now some of the brand new uh, boats and other types of trailers, they have um, like, they say the maintenance free hubs, but I've even had those go out before. You put enough miles on, on a hub, it'll go out. So it's something that you need to check pretty often and just can take like a mallet or something. Kind of knock this thing off. Oh, there is some grease in there. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. That's what the inside of that looks like, but um, it's all nasty, grimy. Probably be a good opportunity to uh, clean that out a little bit. Clean some of that nastiness off, but it's the crispy. I'm going to let it ride. Pump some new grease in there. Hope she's all right. Okay, so it looks like the uh, insert for the hub to grease the hub just popped out when I was trying to remove the hose so now I'm thinking about it I think I remember that doing it the last time I did this which was uh, probably over a year ago I'm just going to pretend like I didn't see that I'm gonna put this cap back in here 
we'll call that a day right there on that. We will have to order some replacements. Okay, Crispy is ready to do some gilling tomorrow. So I've got a box set up ready for gilling. And now it is time for everybody's favorite part of the day, and that's cleaning snakes. Ah, you know, I don't clean snakes too often. All right, I'm gonna put my little snake through there, and then I'm gonna skin him straight down. Okay, buddy, don't need your head. So we'll put that in there. There's not a whole lot of color on the snake, but it just happens to be one that's somewhat incapacitated, and uh, I said, I'll take it. I can make use of that, so. I'm just going to take my sharp knife here. I'm going to try to get straight down, straight down the belly as I can. This is one of those jobs you don't really want to do around the wife. You should probably question what you're doing. Now we'll take our little buddy here. We'll go feed him to the raccoons. So I've only done this one time and it was with a rattlesnake down in South Texas. Uh, it was absolutely gigantic. It's, it's, it almost went across the entire road, the Sendero. I chased it into a bush with a uh, 2500 HD Silverado and I set it out in the South Texas sun for a couple weeks and I had salted it and borax it and everything like that. And then I came back and it was gone. Like animals had just taken it on this ranch. So I don't know where it went to, but uh, it would have been a really cool mount. I was just gonna, you know, mount it up on the wall, but it would have been the ultimate bow backing because you could have done the entire thing. It was almost as long as me. And most of my bows I've built are about right here, like just under my chin. So it definitely would have stretched the whole entire way. Okay, we got all the, uh, the fleshy pieces scraped off. Now we're just going to salt this. Let's make sure we're getting all that middle section real good to dry it out. The edges are just going to come off with a knife so it's not crucial that they're super clean. Alright guys, yucky part is over. Uh, now it is time to switch gears and we're going to do some gill fishing next. So I've got the panfish poles, I've got a gill box rigged up, ready to go. And then I'm going to take those bluegill, I'm going to bait some, uh, some lines for some catfish, hopefully get some big catfish, man. I've been on a catfish kick here lately, they are so good. Thank you guys for following me on all my outdoor adventures. We've got a lot coming up because this is summertime and that means there's water everywhere. Going up north soon too. So anyway, subscribe to the channel and uh, smash the like button. I will see you on the next one. Godspeed, God bless you.